Uh, June 2016, so summer before the presidential election, that's when we first learned that the Democratic National Committee, Democratic Party, had been hacked. This was the first story that ran about it in the Washington Post, which also helpfully made clear, based on a forensic analysis that was done by a computer security firm, uh, that it appeared that that hack of the Democratic Party was carried out by Russian government hackers. Well before the disaster of Georgia election security in the 2016 election, uh, in his first full year as Secretary of State in 2010, he sent armed agents door to door in black neighborhoods in Brooks County, Georgia. This was after a big get out the vote effort there among black residents. That big get out the vote effort led to the first ever majority African-American school board in their town. Local residents said they'd been motivated that year by teacher layoffs in their school district, teacher layoffs that were really unpopular. And according to one local leader of the voter registration effort, quote, we'd been bit by the Obama bug. This was 2010. We'd been bit by the Obama bug. And we knew it was time for a change in Brooks County as well. They brought criminal charges against 12 local black residents who'd helped in the get out the vote effort. They brought charges against those 12 residents for things like bringing envelopes containing completed absentee ballots to a mailbox. They criminally charged this group of local residents with more than 100 election law violations, including dozens of felonies. They put them on trial to face more than a thousand combined years in prison. And you know what? Not a single one of those charges held up. On every single one of those charges, the local resident was either acquitted or the charge had to be dropped by the prosecutors. Not only were there no convictions, there weren't even any plea deals. Acquitted or dropped on every single one. And the attorney general of the state subsequently had to issue a statement clarifying that actually none of the actions those African-American local residents in Brooks County had been charged with, none of the things they were charged with were actually illegal. Mailing in absentee ballots is not a crime. Registering your neighbors to vote is not a crime. But tell that to the people who Brian Kemp sent his armed agents door to door after in 2010. That's Brian Kemp. Georgia Secretary of State. They've been saying you Wait see till the next generation. Then you find your identity. Wait till the next generation. We're gonna be ready to take a stand. Wait till the next generation. And take control of the life that's in your hands. All along the road, freedom and democracy, gaining moral strength. Wisdom and stability There's gonna be A victory for the common man A vast awakening All across the land All across the land In the next generation But it's gonna be hard to Wait find the next generation We're gonna select the things that go into our mind Shape our own destiny Wait till the next generation. and alter 
the face of history All along the road Freedom and democracy Gaining moral strength, wisdom and stability It's gonna be A victory for the common man A vast awakening All across the land All across the land And the next generation this I want you to understand. The next generation. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna wait till the next generation. Because this is the next generation, man. blacks then take them to nigger branch today it seems as if though this just may be the reemergence and continuation of the civil rights movement you must understand that joseph Lowry said in the 90s that valdosta brooks county and south georgia would be the new hub of the new civil rights movement You've already seen that on my YouTube channel. And now you can see that his words are apparently coming to fruition. This is the Griffin Freedman Police Department that are given the escort to the Honorable Tyrone Brooks. Joseph Eckers Lowry was here. And the people are marching. They are marching because they don't believe that the Griffin 10 did anything wrong. This is kbci.blogspot.com. I do what I do because that's what I do. This is Quitman 
Georgia, Quitman Police Department. This is the Brooks County Courthouse. If the news media don't report it, we will. That's the way we do it. Listen. Listen, please. change and that change seemingly is among us. This is Quitman, Georgia, Brooks County. Concerned citizens on the move. Listen to the voices. Listen. Listen please.
www.blogspot.com. George Foster Rhymes on YouTube. I'm in Quitman in the city of Quitman in the county of Brooks in the state of Georgia. I, we just left a meeting wherein uh, with the Honorable Civil Rights legend Tyrone Brooks. And we just interviewed people about their experiences with the GBI and the voter registration here in Brooks County. Uh, all, along with the equipment 10. And while we was getting ready to exit, we met a beautiful brother here. What's your name, my beautiful brother? James C. Brown III. Okay. And you were telling uh, my beautiful brother, uh, Tyrone Brooks, what were you telling him about your experiences? The GBI, they came to my house and I allowed them to enter. They started asking me questions. And so they, they had my a copy of my, my voter absentee ballot. They asked me, was that my signature on the ballot? And I said, yes. So I was wondering where they got the ballot from, but I never asked them that question. So then they asked me other questions. They asked me, did I fill out the ballot? And I said, yes. And, and, they, and I sealed the ballot, and I put it in the other envelope and sealed it too. And I asked them, why were they there at my house? Because there was no voter fraud going on at my house because I was the one that filled out the ballot. Then they asked me who mailed it, and I didn't answer that question. And and then they told me that I would be um, getting subpoenaed to court. And I told them that's fine. I'm represented by a law firm out of Atlanta. And, and then I asked them what their names were and their badge numbers. And the other one, one, the first one told me his name was Steve Turner, and the other his name was Mark Pro. So I'm I asked, I'm familiar with Turner. And I asked him. I said, "How do you spell your name?" So he said, "M." A R K. And his last name sounded weird to me, so I asked him how he spelled his last name. He said P R O. And I don't know why he did that because one of the other questions he asked me was, was I literate? Could I read? And I told him yes. Oh my god. And and so I was um, you know, things got a little I was a little upset, but I, I kept my composure and and I, and I told him at one time that I don't know why they asked me these other questions because they have nothing to do with the investigation and there was no vote for going to my house so they needed to go and find someone else to talk to and that was pretty much the end of the conversation. Okay, I have a question for you. What were your profession? Well, what kind of job have you held since, since you left high school? I went in the Navy exec. Um, right after graduation. Um, and I, I got out of the Navy in 92, but I went into the reserves. And then in 94, I enlisted back into the regular Army, active duty, and I retired from the Army on March the 1st, 2010. What and, kind of, okay, go ahead. And I'm, I'm currently a bail bondsman. I've never killed anyone out yet. City Council yes. was just duly elected in November. That, that's what I wanted. And I also want one other thing. I, I want to know because I, I just read, and uh, Mr. Brooks, I got this in your package there, uh, wherein there's a federal judge that made racist comments about our president. And so out of, the, out of all the 44 presidents, I think that the last one, President Barack Obama, received more negativity than any president in the history of this country. So I'm bringing that in because of you and what you've done. You serve your country, am I correct? Yes. But yet you feel, I mean, something with the GBI and your voting, you over in foreign countries, by you being in the military, you could have gone to, an, to, a, to a foreign nation to die, right? Yes. On the battle line. Yes. Now, aren't you a disabled veteran? I think you, talk, tell me about that, your disability. That, that's what I want on here. Yes, I'm a disabled veteran, 80% disabled. I've served two tours in Iraq. In Iraq? In Iraq. Have mercy. And then for you to come here and to receive questions about voting and voting rights, that reminds me, if not you, of Jim Crow back in the days when we had to count how many bubbles in a bottle of water, all these other crazy questions. So you are one person who know about the alleged GBI intimidation. Am I correct? Yes. All and right. I consider that a travesty of justice. All travesties of justice should be answered up for, and and once they look into this, then the, then the mistake can be corrected, and the group of ten can be exonerated. Okay, I want to know your first opinion. I'm going to close this out now. That, that takes care of that. Now, thank you for your statement. 
but what do you think in your own words? Give me, I want, I, I didn't hear this today. I want to hear one person to tell me, I'm going to step off and I want you to talk from your heart. How do you feel about the Quit Mateen and what happened to them? Well, I've known most of the Quit Mateen most of my life. I grew up down the street from a couple of them. And they are just people. They are upright people in, in the community. I've never heard anything bad about any of them. And I just think that it's, this town is, is still with the 60s mentality, if not before. Um, there's no representation. The, the, the city is mostly black, but all of our head, our leadership is white. The, the mayor is white. The chairman of the board for the county commissioner is white. The sheriff's white. The police chief is white. And, and now all of a sudden that we have blacks in charge, that's a problem. And I also wonder if they said there was a problem, there was a spike in the ballots, did they check all of the ballots, not just the ballots that were for equipment 10. Did they check the ballots that were voted for um, on the other side? Or they just, it was a one-sided investigation. So I, I truly believe that equipment 10 has been dealt a bad hand and I'll be glad when this is all over and they are put back into their positions because I believe what the governor did was unconstitutional. Yes, State your name and position that you hold and your address one more time for us. I am James C. Brown III. I'm a city councilman in District 142. My address is 716 East Lafayette Street, Clifton, Georgia, 31643. Do you remember the date that you were visited by the GBI agents? I do not remember the date. You remember the month? I cannot even remember. What year was it? I don't, I, I, I believe I read, wrote all that down on the, on an envelope that I have because after they left, I called the Department of Justice and I reported their names and I think I had their badge numbers. Was it before the equipment team were arrested or after? I believe it was before they were before arrested. Before they were arrested, yes. okay. Thank you very much. This is kvci.blogspot.com, George Boston Rams, YouTube, Boston GBR. We do what we do because we want you informed once again. Thank you, my beautiful councilman. May God bless you. Thank you, Brother Brooks. Candidate for City Council and Mayor and Gordon had a chance to sound off to voters at a forum Monday night. Justin McDuffie tells us one person many wanted to hear from, however, was a no-show. I won't go into that. That was classic. You won't um, go into it because you know it's a lie. Hey, that, that's, you, I, what, I'm with you, 100%, George. I mean, thank you. you know so that's, that's, I won't go into that. That was classic. You won't um, go into it because you know it's a lie. Hey, that, that's, you, I, what, I'm with you, 100%, George. I mean, thank you. you know so that's, lie. that's, I won't go into that. That was classic. You won't um, go into it because you know it's a lie. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. Y'all's name is on the Splash account, and this man is here tonight 
like he would very much like it, you know, be paid so he can finish this job. Now, he's through with the job three weeks ago. And it is not the same check. Well, we it's a to, different check. We need to let council look at this. Sir? Uh, council, uh, he's the finance chair. You need to look at that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question, please. Uh, as far as the payroll going this year, you have bad days, but I don't have to have the best days. But when I'm not having a good day, I don't even dress up. I stay around the house. The chief is ready to table check. I've got no problem signing payroll checks. I said, the only thing is, if you say, if you bring my hand outside, bring me a check off of this. Don't just bring my bump the check and say, sign these. Mm -hmm. I want to check the list to see who's getting what. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people come back and sign a check. And the problem we had, we've been having for years, is not accountability, is that so many of us are asked to sign a check by the clerk. And when you sign the check, everything is blocked for what you're supposed to sign. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did the check, you did not do the amount. You just see where you put your name. I won't go into this. Yeah. Attorney General Sam Olsen need to come here into these southern towns and try to put an end to this before this get out of hand. We have pleaded in several cities and we have asked that our leaders come to try and resolve the situation. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that.
it, be, it, it only proves what I've been saying to the governor, to the Attorney General Sam Olins, to the Secretary of State Brian P. Kemp, that there is major problems here in the state of Georgia. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along that does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. for City Council and Mayor and Gordon had a chance to sound off to voters at a forum Monday night. Justin McDuffie tells us one person many wanted to hear from, however, was a no-show. Dozens filled the City Hall annex in Gordon to hear from possible future leaders. Conrad Etheridge was one of them. You heard some of the candidates saying they had some ideas of where they would make things go better. Candidates fielded questions from voters about a variety of topics, from the water system to the budget. The city has overspent the budget by approximately 30 percent each year, four years consecutively, without addressing the, the issues of revenue or expenditures. Some of it may be that the managing the budget is difficult. The mayor is by charter responsible for the budget and managing the budget. That's Kenneth Turner. He's running against the current mayor, Mary Ann Whippleu. One of his top priorities is bringing the community back together. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues has been well known for that. He says that's changed since the last election in 2013. He attributes that to Whippleu's tenure as mayor. She chose not to attend Monday night's forum. Uh, the city is not in a good shape financially, not in a good shape from a morale standpoint and from other issues and I just, I, I just wonder if she's just afraid to address those issues. This is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhines. I'm down on the streets of Macon, Georgia, and I thought that I would do a short interview here with the Honorable Mayor Mary Ann Whippaloo. How you doing this evening? I'm doing great, and yourself? Great. Uh, Mayor, you don't mind if I ask you a few questions, do you? Not at all. Okay, what I'd like to start out with asking you to get started is uh, how do you see the city of Mayor, uh, the city of Gordon, right now? How do you view the city of Gordon? The city right now is in a ball of confusion due to the fact simply that the people, some of the people uh, that are uh, preventing and causing and creating chaos simply because I requested uh, for reason all to be done to simply let the folks, all of us know where the money is. So you are saying that when they talk about the fact that you took some keys, the fact that you are violating the Open Records Act, the fact that you removed Attorney Boone from office, the fact that you are a bad person, the fact that you are don't have the best interests of the people of Gordon at hand and in your administration, you are saying that it's all a center around the audit. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, considering that, it seems as if, though, there is a vote by uh, uh, Councilman Edith as well as Denzel, and we don't, and, and, and as well as, as Smallwood, and we, want, we don't want to point fingers, but we do believe that the record will bear this out, that that have been a, an impediment 
to the forward movement of Bill Basket going forward with his investigation or audit. Am I correct? Yes, yeah, so true. Okay. Now, once, and I'm, I'm not from Gordon, but when I look at that, what would you say to the people of Gordon? In other words, what can they do to maybe get these impediments removed so the audit can go forward, so the books can be cleared? What do you think just may resolve that? Well, uh, truly, first of all, I think in order to move forward, you have to uh, get involved. The, 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 the constituents or citizens of Gordon need to be proactive. They w should want to know uh, what's in the coffer, how much money has been spent, uh, how much is yet still on hand so that we can have an accurate account of where we are. Uh, come out and hold us accountable as uh, your elected officials. I've been elected as mayor, and we've elected uh, three, well, two female council members. Come out and see for yourself as to what the issues and subjects are about, and therefore you will get it straight from the heart, straight from the council meeting, and not the local newspaper that's being biased. Uh, when you say bias, what do you mean bias? If, when you say bias, uh, would you say that the newspapers are biased when they say that you threaten someone or when they say that uh, uh, former attorney uh, Joseph Boone is still the uh, mayor, I mean the, 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 the attorney, when in actuality the judge possibly never said that? If, if the judge never said that, why would the paper say something different from what the judge
It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been yeah. well known for that. Don't hit me again, Ms. Lambert. Don't hit me again. Yeah. This is uh, Mr. George Ryan. Mr. George Ryan is the Assistant Attorney General for the I'm very controversial. I've been doing this since 75. Eric Holt, the Department of Justice. This will be on the two problems well. Just Department out of Atlanta and other agencies are aware of what I do. They're familiar with the threats on my life. And so if this individual picture show up some places, it will be caused of what I didn't do, but what others were concerned about George Foster the right. I'm throwing that out. That was not a part of what I'm going to say tonight. I'm throwing that out. Okay. First of all, I'm standing here because I was called to Quitman, Georgia, because of the newly elected black mayor there, James Charles Brown III, who wanted an office, and when he was inaugurated as the first black mayor, no one came from the council. I was then called to Meigs, Georgia. I was then called to Lumpkin, Georgia, wherein a sitting council member, Debbie Stone, called the city mayor, Charles Gibson, a nigger. That is being investigated as we speak. Then I was called to Dawson, Georgia, with Chris Wright, a newly elected black mayor who was shot six times, left in his yard for dead. I was then called to Davisboro, Georgia. I was then called to Warrington, Georgia. I was then called to Gordon, Georgia. And I have been called to 11 cities. This is not a game for me. You can record me all you want. You can call me nigger many times as you like. Just like I was called nigger twice coming from Morris Bank on February 6, 2015. That stuff don't deter me. I put 21 years in the United States Armed Forces. This is my DD Form 214, the my retirement paper, and one of the many accommodation medals that I've gotten while in the United States Armed Forces. The reason I'm sticking around in Gordon for so long is because I've been passing this information on 
Because I don't, I do not believe that any mother or grandmother should have to go through certain things simply because possibly the color of their skin. I don't believe that. It is obvious of that throughout my 5,000 videos on YouTube, 700,000 views across the nation. When I was called a nigger, that's the only reason I'm standing before you today. I don't have a problem. You can't offend me by calling me a nigger. <laughs> my grandmother told me about that many years ago. My grand, my grand uncle fought in wars, told me as a child how he fought the enemy, couldn't use the bathroom in the United States of America, couldn't do some of the other things that's supposed to be guaranteed by the Constitution. When you look at my record, you will see Stella Clean in the military, Stella Clean in Valdosta, Stella Clean everywhere that I've been. The people who try to intimidate me in this city, it won't work. It, won't, it will not work. I'm committed to the same principles that I served in this United States Armed Forces. I took pride in serving my country. San Antonio, Texas, security headquarters, inside the fence, the generals and the colonels, this is going to be on YouTube as well. That's where I work, and I work with pride, and I love this country until this day. And people who know me, the professors at VSU at Fort, uh, Bella State College, they know me, black and white. They know who I am. My reputation speaks for itself. I'm going to continue to do what I do. There, Mary, uh, Linda Harris over in Meigs, Georgia, is worse than what's happening here. And as I close, I hope somebody keep your time, because I don't want to go over but let me say this in closing. It saddens me to see all of these communities. The people are crying out for help and for some type of easement from what they're going through in these 11 cities. The Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, Georgia General General Sam Olins, the Governor of the State of Georgia, Eric Hole, the Department of Justice, All Civil Rights Division, Women Rights Organization, AFL-CIO, and others. They are watching what's going on. It's not just Gordon. To the people of Gordon, please don't think that it's just Gordon. Please don't think that. And for the white people who think black folks hate you, we don't, we don't hate you. And if we do, we shouldn't. Why? Because white folks fought for us, black folk, before we knew what the fight was all about. I know that. I'm a history. I study history. Uh, now, all right. So I'm going to take my seat. See, like nobody tell me about the time. I think my three minutes. Right? But no, 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 wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let me say this. If anybody think that I tried to belittle them or down them, let me know, and I will apologize. There is no hatred in me. What I love is God's people. And what I love is for this nation to go up and not regress. That's what I want to see. So, Mayor and Council, I want to say this to you as I close for sure. When I was called a nigger twice, I'm not calling no names. I'm not going to use the video that I turned around. I'm not going to do that. Why am I not going to do that? Because that's not what it's about. What it's about is building a better city. Whether it's Meg, Darwin, Whitman, Monica, David Burke, that's what it's about. When I, was so, when, I, when, when I was in the military, they didn't tell me that I no black and no white, no Democrat, no Republican, no they told me to do what I need when I served in the Vietnam era. Right. They didn't need all that. <laughs> yes, sir, y'all having a question for me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes. I have a question. Please do. Yes, all questions. Uh, do you live, now live in Gordon? No, I do not live in Gordon. And so you're not a citizen of Gordon? No, I'm not a citizen here of, of the city of Gordon. Okay. And, well, no, 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 no. That's, that's, yes, of course, you deserve this. And the answer is, no, I do not. I enrolled in the military in 1971. I didn't serve Gordon. I didn't serve Thomasville, Valdosta, Atlanta, none of them. Or neither of our, or Puerto Rico or our, our outlying territories. I serve for everybody. And that's why I'm, I serve everybody. So when I go, 
So when I'm called to these communities, so when I'm called to these communities, I go because I care. That's why I go. Nobody give me no gas for coming up here for the most part. I do it because I love people. I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so my question is, you're under the citizens uh, of talking time, um, and is, are you appearing as a citizen of Warden or as a journalist, or how are you appearing here? If you're appearing as a journalist, why does the mayor stop me from speaking? Now, I go to a lot of cities, I'm very familiar with the laws of addressing city council. I have no idea, but I will say this. If the mayor stopped you from doing what I'm doing tonight as a journalist to get to free press under the name of George Boston Rhymes, if she stopped you after you put in the, oh, the request to speak as I put in the request, she is wrong in my opinion. If you put in a request tonight, I think that you have a right to be doing the same thing that I'm doing, and I wish you would have. Now that's just, that's just the way I see it. Jesus said, what I say unto one, I say unto all. And so if you can't do it unto all of us, don't do it unto any of us. That's right. Yes, yes. You said that you don't try to belittle anybody or make them feel bad. When you hold the newspaper up that I publish and make criticisms about that newspaper, that's offensive to me because you're not going off fact. You're only going off opinion and your emotional feelings. Listen, I'm not saying that, but go the ahead and address it. Trash. Go Mom, ahead this and lady's talking out of here. This lady just called the newspaper trash, and she's talking out of here. Excuse me, ladies, right now. You will address that, and we will end this. Okay, please, thank you. Uh, Editor Judy, uh, maybe I will say this to you. If what I spoke was an error, or if I spoke that offended you, from my heart, I'm sorry. But from my observation, from what I know to be untruth, just like today's thing, I can sit with you, if you would like at any time, with the camera rolling. And let's dialogue the apples and oranges, and let's find out. Somewhere I read, come let us reason together. Mm -hmm. And that's what is happening in this world today. People are not willing to sit down and reason. It ain't about argument, because if, if people are looking for somebody to argue with the George Boss Ryan, I'm sorry, you got the wrong one, I don't argue. I just, I just thank, you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Excuse me, Ms. Bailey. I'm speaking. I know, I, no, I said after he speaks, that would be why the end. Why? You didn't have have it, please have a seat. We are moving further along because you kept asking questions. That's from the mayor. Let's, all right, let's have a seat. That's the end of that. So now, moving further along, you and him will have to get together. Y'all can ask all the questions. I don't have anything else to say to him. been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been yeah. well known for that. I want to address Mary if I say one more thing. I want to address this back now. I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, it's important. It's probably what we've been doing. On my personal level, I don't trust it. That's me. I'm speaking for me. Because when I get a lawsuit for this city and my name in there, and Mr. Boone said I talked to him, blah, 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 and he only presented one side. I got a side, too. Now, I know what transpired with some conversations we had. I'm speaking on my side. I cannot work with people I don't trust. In 19 years, I have never called to ask any legal advice. Now we get these calls, we call them legal advice. Everything we say to get the information to move the city forward. It's thrown against us. It's overreading by the way. Uh, you shouldn't have done it. You harassed us. I have not harassed anybody. That's not my name. And I don't appreciate reading in a lawsuit. You harassed somebody. Why not get my side before you do the lawsuit? You are the attorney that represent the city, not half of it. And I don't appreciate that. That's my statement that I cannot work with people that I did not trust. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that.
throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. Roger B. Tawney, a southerner, reads a decision that says that Dred Scott as a black person and black people generally had never been, were not then, could never be citizens of the United States and as such have no rights which white men are bound to respect. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. You know, right, this is the Sunshine Law. What it says, every motion has to be listed as a motion and the person who makes the motion and second the motion. Uh, these exactly. are not these are not on here. Please. Uh, I have it right here. And I Please can't read what it problem. says about official minutes. I'll make a motion that we turn down these minutes because they're not official. That is my motion. I know, I know what disorderly is, and I want to tell you that. And this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me, is all I got to say. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been yeah. well known for that. I know, I know what disorderly is, yes, and I want to tell you that. And this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me. That's all I got to say. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues it's been yeah. well known for that it's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along it does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues it's been yeah. well known for that. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been yeah. well known for that. Excuse me, uh, what, what, this is the Ghetto Free Press. Uh, what's your name? My name is April Smith. April, uh, could you tell me how long you lived in this city? I've lived here over 40 years. 40 years, okay. Uh, I was talking to you and I want to highlight, you asked some very pertinent questions. Uh, what were you saying about uh, how, what, what do you think of the mayor first of, of all, and then go into any other thing you just want to share with the people for a better understanding of what this city is going through and what it's all about? Um, actually, the mayor, she's a, she's a wonderful, she's a wonderful person mm -hmm. as a person. I've known her, and for her to actually step up and uh, want to get the uh, to the betterment for Gordon, I, I really applaud her for, for that. But 
as she has taken office, she has not been able to even move any kind of step forward because she's being put down. Everything that she tried to go in and establish, you know, to, to do the betterment of Gordon, she's being shut down. Mm -hmm. And I've actually attended the, the, the council meetings, not since she's been mayor, but actually I've attended the meetings prior to her even becoming mayor. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that she is actually going through, I never, I've never seen it in the other prior um, uh, city council meetings. A lot of things that they're bringing against her, I've never seen this happen. And and I'm really, it really behooves me, you know, to actually see she's going through this. And, and as the council meeting that we had last night, uh, a lot of things have been coming out. And as far as uh, who's on the signatures, as far as being uh, for the bank and everything. So last night, one particular thing that stood out to me that I just couldn't could come to wits with it. I couldn't understand it, rather. And uh, if you're not on the financial document, how would you know what's being transpired and what's not being transpired? And the person that's actually supposed to be on the financial document, uh, they don't even know what's going on. So it's some kind of contradictory there that I, I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, you say that the, so there are some people who know more about the finances than the people who should know? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, a lot of some of the councilmen that's on the that's on the council board, they're speaking out against they're speaking out as to what's on the financial uh, do, uh, report rather than the person that's actually signed on the document. They don't even know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's contradictory to me. Mm -hmm. Something is going on, and it's it's not right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, uh, so anything well. else you want to say? That's about it. That'll be it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press doing what we do because somebody got to do it. Bye bye. We're gone. Greetings. This is the Ghetto Free Press. I just interviewed the mayor and some more citizens, but after listening to the, the husband of the mayor, I thought that I would ask him a few questions here uh, right before I get ready to leave the city. Uh, what's your name? Well, my name is Basilou. Basilou, all right. And you you speak a little different dialect. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Jamaica. Jamaica, all right, already right, from Jamaica. Uh, what I want you to tell us, uh, I'm sure that you are familiar with uh, the problem that your wife is having. Uh, what do you think may be the overall problem? Uh, do they respect the ballot uh, and the voters uh, of, 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 uh, of Gordon, uh, Georgia? Well, I will say this. Um, I was, when I came to this country, I was told that the vote, vote was one of the most important things a citizen could have. But I find here is that there is a gender that certain people have and when they go to the vote, they go to the, the ballot, go to the election and um, vote for somebody, it doesn't really make any difference because they have an agenda to find some one way or the next. If they, if they have somebody to be elected, they find a way to elect, to have him um, deemed to be the elected um, candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, I bring, I bring your attention to um, the fact that my wife, Mary Lou, was not the first black to be elected as mayor of the uh, city of Gordon. Mm -hmm. You had another man in 1994, he was elected and um, they stole it. They stole it and if, we, if you go back to the, um, uh, to, 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 to the records, you'll find that the reason why he was not uh, vote, he was not um, um, elected or elected. put in office. He, he was not um, sworn in as a, okay. as a mayor. Is because the time has run out for him to make a, 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 a to contest the results. Mm -hmm. But basically, he won, and um, I think the reason why he really did the truth is he was threatened. Mm -hmm. Well, this mayor has found it uh, necessary not to take the, the, the easy way out. Stand up and be, and be counted, and uh, because 
um, she was elected as, as a mayor, she should be really uh, given the privileges of a mayor and she should not be used and abused by the power structure of this city and told what she can do and told what she can't do and um, bring out ungodly uh, charges that is not really uh, no no foundation whatever how can somebody be be found guilty of equal opportunity employment uh, the, um, uh, the, the default and he's the one bringing charge against the city right now uh what about the news media uh i was called to go in georgia because they say that whatever is published in the newspaper and television is one-sided but the, that the mayor's side is never published and we have the same thing in other areas of the state of georgia what do you think about that or what's the status on that well let me say this we may think that this what is happening in gordon is isolated to gordon only but if you look at right across the, the state of georgia it is repeated time and time and time again and in some cases it is even resorted to violence there was one mayor that was shot four times six six times six i interviewed, times, I interviewed, I interviewed him like the other week mm -hmm. oh and they left him for dead yes sir and uh god says he you know got uh, work unfinished yes, uh, yes your, your, your job is not finished here yet right. Right. so one, another one was it was um not permitted to enter the city hall right 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 um and these are many people are abused they are are um treated so unfairly that I wonder where is the law and order of this country? Of yeah, this yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, 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 that's a very good point. I want to ask you this question here. Don't you think, cons just consider, not to consider maybe Quitman, Meigs, Dawson, or uh, Warren County, Warrington County, or, uh, or another county, uh, uh, um, Davisboro. After considering all these problems in these cities that are dealing with black mayors, why do you think Mayor, I mean, the Governor Nathan Deal, or Attorney Sam Olson, or uh, the Secretary, I mean, somebody, Secretary of State, it seemed to me that they ought to come in here and see what's wrong. I mean, right now, the eyes of the United States and the eyes of the world is focused on Georgia, and yet the Georgia General Assembly, they're not saying anything about all that. What do you think about that? Well, <laughs> bear in mind, my friend, that in 1964, mm -hmm. we had um, the same thing happening here. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's why we had the march on Washington. Yes. Because nobody wanted to come to the, 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 the towns or the cities to see how people were living. Mm -hmm. And that's why we had that march on Washington. And that was the whole world saw it. So it does appear as if we will have to do something like that this time to, make, to bring some attention to our city and to our community to make sure that we have not moved, we have not improved since 1964. Mm -hmm. Fifty years later, we are still experiencing the same things as our forefathers experienced. Are you a citizen of this country now? Yes, I am. So uh, do you register to the vote? Yes, I am. Why weren't you at the meeting last night? I was in, t um, no, the people told me that I should stay away, bottom okay. line. Okay, okay, that, that's, that's good enough. But the bottom line is that I, I, I want to say to you, uh, from what some of the other citizens told me last mm -hmm. night, uh, you do have a right to be there, in my opinion. Yes. And I think you should be there. Uh, the mayor is going to do what, she should do what she wants to do, but you, you, you have a right, uh, oh man. But anyway, that's so much for that. Uh, what I would like for you to do now, so, would you not say that what you've seen here in the United States, it, 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 would you agree with me that it don't look good on our, on our former government as you close out? Well, I would say that our government um, is not really in control. Mm. And I don't know if, if um, uh, people will, will agree with me or not, but it seems like the lobbyists, mm -hmm. the big money, yes, sir. they are the one that is pulling and uh, calling shots okay and it's time for us to wake up and find people who is willing to stand up and mm -hmm. be counted mm -hmm. uh, people are thinking of they may get killed or so forth mm -hmm. but the point is we are only here for a short time absolutely and the lord says uh your own your duty of man is to fear god and keep his commandments 
and that's all I do. Fear God and keep his commandments. Thank you what so much. What can man do to me? Amen. Thank you so much, my beautiful brother. I've seen you involved. You've been the making. You, I think you came to Brooks County with equipment 10 plus yes, 2. You I know about it. them. Yes. And your wife has been there. I want to tell you that it seems to me that it takes people from outside the community often to come in and bring about change. And I think that you and your wife will make some uh, great strides here in the city of, of Gordon. Thank you very much. And thanks for the interview. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. And this is George Boss Ryan doing what we do because it must be done. Look, ignorance will destroy us, but information can save us. And I am concerned about saving us. And when I say us, I mean this republic, black, white, Jew, Gentile, Protestant, Catholic, and you. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been yeah. well known for that. Yes, sir, you had something to say? Yeah, um, I have one observation, really. And that is when we, for, when uh, the council um, first voted on the audit, you had six council members was present and you had five voted for the audit and one voted against the audit it is rumored that one person made a statement to another member you are a disgrace to the white race well if that's not racist i don't know what is he also said and i quote if i go to jail you are going to go to jail also so why you want to support it those, quest, those statements have never been put on the, on the, way, on the air, on, in the news, in the newspaper, in the Wilkinson Post. I'm, I'm wondering why. I spoke to Channel 41 about it, and their comment was, and I quote, I understand, I was there, I heard it, I've written tape, but from our vantage point, it is not newsworthy. And that we tell you exactly what I'm saying. So, so now, Mr. Lou, what you are saying is that, I mean, when you first started, my question to you was, is this a figment of your imagination? But now you have stated on camera mm -hmm. before the people and citizens in Gordon, mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia, and for Eric Holder of the Department of Justice mm -hmm. that also have a civil rights division yes. that deals with racial issues, yes. You making it unequivocally clear Here. that somebody witnessed what was said, yes. yet our newspapers have ignored yes. or, ch or said that it was not newsworthy. Yes. When in, let me repeat, when in Lumpkin, Georgia, a white female city councilman allegedly referred to Mayor Gibson, and I went and covered the story because I was called to that area, referred to him as a nigger. They told me, don't use the N-word, but call it what it is because we're at 2014. So you are saying what you just said has been, can, can, can be substantiated and verified by certain individuals. Who else was there that saw or heard what you were saying? Um, I would say the mayor reported it, number one, okay. at the meeting. Okay. Nobody. Okay, so this was at a public meeting? Yes. City council City meeting? City council meeting. Yes. And that was, not that was not put in the minutes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that somebody is not putting the, 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 the beef of the minutes in the minutes? Hey Amen. That's exactly what I'm saying. It, it, Tawana Brown. What, what, what's the name? City clerk. Go ahead. What, what, what's the name? Her name is City Clerk Tawana Brown. I was there at that meeting when Mayor Lou discussed that. She said point blank that Tara Eady made a comment to uh, City Council Member uh, Smallwood. I'm a Smallwood. Exactly. Said that, uh, well, you ought to just paint your face black. Now, if that's not a racist comment, I don't know what it is. Do we want a person of that nature, of that character, being uh, mayor pro tem for us? Do we want that person to step up? Now, they got a good one, Mayor Luke. Now they're trying to put in, what? A disgrace. We support Mayor Luke. We, we support the mayor. We support the mayor.
it's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. What's your name? My name is Bessie Lou. Mr. Lou, uh, as we stand here on the streets of Macon, Georgia, what is your take on Gordon or anything that you want to share with the voters in Gordon and in the state of Georgia? My first, I was amazed to find out that discrimination exists to the extent it does as I find in, in Gordon right now. My first problem I have is they brought in um, a new mayor. She was elected to office. I was informed that it took her two months to get a charter. She took office on the 6th of January, 2014. And before three weeks was out, at, on the 24th, as a matter of fact, of January, they had four EOC complaints against her. But no, that's not the big part. My problem is what complaints do they have? One, because they, they claim she discriminated against this policeman because the mayor spoke to a black employee. Mm -hmm. And I quote, um, if the mayor had to speak to a black employee, Sergeant Williams, why should that be a... a, a, a cause to bring a lawsuit against the mayor. You heard me right, yeah. Well, the next one is even a little better. Right and right uh, made um, a statement to cover their audit that they gave to the city. And part of that is, uh, part of their, their comments were, the city's clerk did not have the expertise to do her job properly. Well, because the mayor read that letter, that was a cause to bring um, a, um, a complaint against the mayor for creating a hostile environment. You heard me right. Mm -hmm. Well, that is not all. You have this man, he was not able to pass a test to um, do his job, you know, they all, have, they all have to have a license to... Uh, certification. Uh, the certification to do their job. This man did not have the proper certification, and because um, the mayor asked about it, that was enough to say that she, she uh, um, created a hostile environment, and she was discriminating against him and against the, 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 the white people. I mean, it, the, the, how, the, the logic of that I cannot understand. But, uh, you know, it, it, it goes on like that. And I find, if they're going on the, in the news media, mm -hmm. as a headline news, front page news, mm -hmm. major, people brought um, uh, claims against the mayor, discrimination uh, claims against the mayor for these things. So who, uh, what is really right and what is really wrong in the city? I tell you, I do not know how the mayor could stand up under this kind of pressure. But I know, there's got to be a change. If they want to move ahead, they have to change the attitude and their, their outlook. But Mr. And their end. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Lou, what do you think about the, a sitting council member, uh, Terry Eady, if you don't mind, uh, bringing up uh, charges, I guess, 
and maybe a lawsuit or possibly a, with uh, maybe a, another council member against the very council and city for which they have took an oath to serve the interest and to save money and to keep these people uh, money secure. How do you think, what, what's your opinion on that? Well, one, well, you just have a look and see who, who is behind these claims. Who is bringing these, 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 these complaints? If the, if the truth was told... You say well, if the truth is told. If the, if the truth was told, some of these council members, some of these council members should be in jail right now. And I am repeating, repeating. If the truth was told, some of these council members should be in jail right now. Secondly, some of them, they are uh, supporting corruption, um, fraud, and injustices, and there should be a, there should be some investigation into these in the, these 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 um, occurrences. Mm -hmm. But nobody, but nobody wants to even even hear about it. But um, you know what happened? Well, maybe nobody wants to hear about it. But it, but do you not agree with me that they seem to definitely be on top of the mayor? and making sure that she ab abide by the law. Why do you think that uh, Attorney Boone, uh, who have, former Attorney Boone, who have served for such a long time, could sit in place as attorney without any letter of engagement or any contract with the city? What do you think about that? <laughs> no, you understand. Wait, wait, who is bringing these charges? These people are so comfortable using the city, bleeding the city dry, and uh, not, not caring about the man who is suffering. Many of the cheap people of, uh, of Gordon will wake up this morning, want to find an extra dollar in the pocket and cannot find it. The children are hungry, um, the, the rent is not paid, the electricity is not paid, and they don't care. Unemployment, 30%. They don't care. Then how can you survive? Now, every man is entitled to your certain privileges. And when your privilege is taken away from you, well, most people rebel. I am suggesting that these people in Gordon should better get their act together or else when people get frustrated, they never can tell what they'll do. So for that, I tell you, get your act together, Gordon. Stop taking, hiding behind a race card. Stop hiding behind corruption and do what is right. And I say to you, I say to um, Governor Deal, uh, you went to Quitman and you made a blunder of what really happened. Fortunately, the judge and the jury found Lula Smart uh, innocent of all the charges that you removed them from office. Wait, wait. Now, I hope they do the same thing in Gordon. With that, my beautiful brother, I guess we are close out. It's sad that we had to come to Macon, Georgia. We had something to do down here. You called me here. And once again, before I close, why is it that you will come and talk like you're doing now to me, but as well as the mayor just did. But yet, when it comes down to other TV and radio and newspapers, you all seem to be distant. Why is it that you'll come to me? What's the problem, my brother? Why, why, what's going on here? I firmly believe that the news media is not a friend of the black man. And whatever they are putting up there is because they are controlled by certain, uh, certain people and certain uh, um, ideology that they cannot say what is right and what is wrong. They can say what is their agenda mm -hmm. and then try to make the agenda the, the standard. Okay. I'm saying to you that what shall it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Gordon, you are on the verge of losing your soul and what are you going to tell God? And on that note, I'm going to add this and I want your response. Lula Smart case, the equipment 10 plus two, she finally went to court after four years. And after she went to court, 30 to 40 charges was dropped against her, found not guilty of all these charges. And just like the audit with Mr. Basket, no news media was there. And at Lula Smart case, 19 days of court proceedings and no news media was there. So do you see any similarities? And just maybe what you said was true. 
Maybe somebody got their own agenda and their own ideology. Close us out with those remarks, my brother. Yes, well, I can see. I repeat what I said to you. No, tomorrow, many of you may not see the, the, morning, the sunrise. Some of you listening to me right now will die. And what are you going to tell God? You may be sick on your bed now. I tell you, let your conscience be your guide because God will always remember what you did and hurt. And he will always render unto you what you, as a man sow it, that shall he also reap. And it doesn't stop there. Whatever you have done and hurt you today will affect your children yet unborn. So curses, I promise you, God is in charge and he will render unto you just what you render to others. At the man so that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 and 7, for God is not mocked, but whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. Thank you, Jesus. As it is written, so shall it be done. Thank you, that Jesus. That was a white European apostle Paul. Thank you. Saul before his name was changed to the Thank Galatians. You. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm George Boston Rhymes, and I do what I do because it must be done. Under our form of government, if we just sit back, imitate, duplicate, and placate the great words that preceded us, then we will lose this republic and our nation will run that go down in ruin as ancient Rome. Thank you, my beautiful brother, a black African-American man that is willing and able to stand your own ground and speak truth to power. Thank you, Baba. We're gone. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. It's been known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that. known throughout the area as a town that gets along. It does not have race issues or, or class issues or other issues. It's been well known for that.